Let's take an application on home construction. And what I'm showing you here are two matrices that describe some aspect of home construction. The first matrix I'm calling the matrix P and the rows are labeled by model A, model B, and model C and the columns are labeled by a type. And what this is telling me is in a hundred house subdivision how many houses of each type am I going to have? So for instance in the second row first column that means there are going to be ten houses that are of model B and a Spanish type. If I go to the third row second column the twenty there tells me there's going to be twenty model C's with the contemporary styling. The second matrix I've called a matrix Q and that particular matrix uh, talks about the type and also what we're going to use for the exterior materials. So for instance it's a 2 by 4 matrix. If I look at the first row first column it says there's 10 so that means 10 units are required of concrete for the Spanish style. If I go to say the second row third column and I see that entry of 20 that means 20 units of brick are required for the exterior materials on the contemporary style. If I take the product P times Q, what is it? And what does that tell us? So I've taken off the labels here and now I've taken, taken the matrix P which is a 3 by 2 matrix and I've multiplied it by a 2 by 4. So a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 4 means that we're going to end up with a 3 by 4 as our final result. So if I match, make my matches here, let's see what we get. So there's our 2 by 2 and now we need to go ahead and see that those match and they do. The result is a 3 by 4. So what I end up with is that 3 by 4 matrix. So I need to now start finding these entries and I can find any entry in here in particular. Let's go ahead and find out what the first row first column is. So that means I need to match the first row with the first column. So the first row of the first matrix with the first column of the second matrix. So 0 times 10 plus 30 times 50 and that gives me 1500 so I put that in the first row first column. If I go to another entry, this particular entry is in the second row fourth column. So that's the second row, the 10 and the 20. And the fourth column, that's the 2 and the 2. You'll see I have 10 times 2, 20 times 2 written down. So 20 plus 40 gives me 60 and then I put that into my product. If I continue doing this, I can fill out the rest of this matrix. And you might want to go ahead and check some of these entries here to make sure that I've done them correctly. But once you've done that, now we need to think about what do these act entries actually mean. So remember, when we talked about the three rows, the three rows had to do with the model. The four columns had to do with the actual materials. So if we go ahead and work this out, we have those labels on here that we got before. And so now we need to remember what we did. We multiplied the number of houses times the units per house. So the product is the total number of units corresponding to these entries. So if we look at the entry in the third row, first column, that 1,200, that tells me that all of the Model C's will take a total of 1,200 units of concrete. If I go to another entry in here, for instance, the first row, fourth column, that means a total of 60 units of shingles will be needed on all the different Model A's. So I can go to any place in here and figure out exactly what's going on. The key thing to doing this is you need to remember how to label that to begin with. Remember when we took a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 4, the 3 had to do with the models and the 4 had to do with the materials. So that's what helped me to label the uh, 3 by 4 
in the product and figure out what everything meant.